So my wire is straight and I have this bending jig. I don't use pliers because I have a, a problem with that. You don't get it very accurate all the time. But this works very well. This is a post. I drilled a hole in a piece of aluminum, three quarter inch aluminum. And I have a little post. It's not perfectly straight, but it does the job. I marked my copper at the center of the long piece. And uh, you just take and get your fingers or fingertips on there and evenly bend it around. I'm making a right angle, but in this case, I'm pulling it all the way around because I want to make a more secure loop. Now I do this by taking this tool, this gripper, this crimper, uh, it's, it's a end cutter, has a lot of different names. I really don't know what they are. But I get that on there and I continue to crimp it together. You don't want to dig into your copper. And I take this and I bend that back and bend the other side back. And you continue to pull that together. Now that makes a nice loop. It's nice and tight. It's actually, it gets off a little bit. And you take your trusty hammer and flatten it. Now I also want this loop to be a little bit flat so it sits well under the washers and under the screw head. So I'm going to just tap lightly and flatten that out. You can see it gets a little bit flat. And that's all we want was just a flat surface for the screw head, the washer, whatever to grip. And we want a right angle. So we have a right angle, a nice right angle. And uh, that works really well. Now the next part is tricky. Okay, I've turned this uh, copper over because the next bend in our zigzag pattern goes in the opposite direction. Now I've lined this up at the beginning of the ruler and I'm going to go to seven inches and I'm going to make a mark. And this is going to be bent opposite this bend. So we're going back towards me in a right angle. And uh, this doesn't want to cooperate, but we're going to make it. And I'm just going to just bend this around nice and neat, keeping an eye on my mark and making a right angle. You get it close to a right angle. And it makes a nice bend and your mark is fairly centered. It's easier to keep it centered. Now, you can use a square, anything that's a right angle. This actually, this piece of metal is a, the corners are a very tight right angle, and I can I can gauge it by that. Now the next band is going to go from here down, we're going to go in the opposite direction, seven inches. So I place my ruler in the corner, slide down, find my seven inch mark, and mark the copper at seven inches. Now to get another bend like the first bend, that loop bend, 
I need an extra half an inch. So I'm going to make a mark at seven and a half inches. I know this is upside down, but deal with it. And we're about to make our bend. I've marked this at seven inches and seven and a half inches. I place my seven and a half inch mark at the back of the post. And I want this seven inch mark to come together with my bend. And I, because I want seven inches from my angle, I'll show you how we do this. We go around, bring it around, bring it up tight. And you can see we have a perfect bend there. And you see that seven inch mark is staying just where it belongs. And we take our grippers or our pincers or whatever we want to call these things, and put it on there, which is not always easy. And you pinch it together again and bend these back. Continue pinching, and that keeps your seven inches. That keeps your measurement right from here to here. So between these two, these two bends, we have nice seven inch space. And you have to take and Once again, flatten it out. And you have a nice loop. Now the reason I loop these is because I'll show you. When you have a right angle, it goes over a screw. There's not a lot of holding power. Even with a washer, you end up with a lopsided, a lopsided joint. Let me put it that way. But when you have a loop, here's an older loop. When you have a loop and you place that on there, and you put this screw on, and if you add a washer, you get a nice joint. You get a nice flat setting joint and your, your copper can't work its way out. The way this loop is made, you're keeping your angles in the proper uh, perspective and uh, you have a nice tight joint so your antenna won't fall apart because in the wind all this stuff gets vibrating around and, and a joint that's just looped in here just a little bit. I mean, it's not even half the screw. It's just maybe a quarter of the screw head is holding it down. You're losing three quarters of your holding power. So this works out better. Now I'm measuring seven more inches. And this is an outside bend. So we're bending it back towards our loopy bends. And here's the right angle. What I do is I, I move this up just a hair so that mark stays at the center of the bend. I mean, when you're doing it this way, when, when you use the pliers, you can't see where your mark is. But here you can see, and you can move it. You can literally move it. So that makes a nice little bend. And we're going to measure again. Seven inches. plus a half an inch. There we go. And you have to keep flipping your copper over because you're, you're zigzagging. And here we have these marks again. And we're going to bring 
this. Actually, I'm going to bring this around because my copper's hanging up. And you bring that to make a nice loop. I'm going to have to bring this. You need a lot of room to do this. Otherwise, you get hung up on everything. And we're very, very close. We're off of just a hair. But that's okay. Because you can be off a lot. And still come up with a good antenna. It's a matter of holding up in the weather. Ooh. Matter of holding up in the weather. I mean, we have a storm brewing right now. I have a feeling we're going to have a tropical storm here in April. This is Florida. Now, as you hammer these things, they have a tendency to move. So you just tighten it up. And adjust your angles. And you have a nice loopy joint. A very nice loopy joint. So here we have a copper. I have a nice loopy joint, a zig and a zag, a nice loopy joint, a zig and a zag. And these are my joints, and they're going to mount, they're not actually going to mount there, they're going to mount on these insulators. And I'm going to screw a couple of these down and show you how to put this together.